participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my topic will take you on this uh, journey assuring sustainable supply of oil and fats into the future, how Malaysian palm oil will play its role. Uh, there will be this presentation outline, nothing uh, very dramatic, but uh, I will start off by highlighting four major issues that would impact on sustainability of supply or uh, our ability to produce palm oil sustainably or the ability of the world to sustain, to have sustained uh, supply of their favorite oils and fats especially farm. So first, the world population. Obviously, it's not declining yet. It is going to be projected to reach 9 billion people by 2042. Uh, 7 billion last year. So more mouth to feed, so to speak, and we need supply. And there is the UN chart about uh, world hunger. Uh, all those in brown, the up to a uh, very high rate of uh, malnutrition or undernourishment and the one in blue quite okay so you will find that half the world uh, partly covered by those uh, charts in those charts meaning that they need food uh, they need more supply in a sustainable way so we talk about the existing uh, food security. And then we look at the arable land. Obviously, as we move from the 60s, 70s, and now towards the 2012, uh, the trend is also very clear. The world arable land, permanent crop land per capita is declining at a very steady rate, not likely to reverse. And that means that uh, as we move to the growing population in the future, there will be a squeeze for need, I mean, for the same amount of food or more amount of food to be produced from the same piece of land or a smaller acreage of land, meaning need to improve crop yield and things like that. And lastly, the uh, linkage, if you like, how petroleum industry has come into play where prices of food, prices of all supplies have uh, come to be well correlated with the prices of petroleum, partly driven by the use of biofuel, biodiesel from the vegetable oil gas industry. That would mean that uh, vegetable oils, all those uh, price uh, prices on the top, even if they are using food, they need not come below the price of petroleum in equivalent terms because it would then be attractive for biofuel makers to burn this oil uh, at a profit uh, as compared to burning petroleum fuel. So in this way, uh, these four items that I just mentioned are possible drivers of uh, how the world supply will be uh, coping to ensure sustainable or sustainability. Now, of course, palm oil here has already set the trend. It is used mostly 80% for food, 15% for oleochemicals, maybe at this stage 2% for biofuel, and there will be a lot more of the palm biomass that can be converted into biofuel and other applications, meaning there is still a lot more value to be created out of the oil palm industry. And just to highlight the fact that the biomass is uh, probably three or four times bigger in terms of tonnage compared to the palm oil that is produced by the oil palm. So if we can create new value through the biomass conversion into energy sources or manufactured products, furniture items, then the industry has got a lot more opportunity to create value from this part of the uh, industry rather than just to rely on the use of the oil 
palm oil and palm kernel oil for current cultivations. <coughs> but we are obviously starting from a very good position that the oil palm is very uh, high yielding, 10 times more productive than soya, the dimension umpteen times. Uh, that is the advantage that palm, palm oil, especially in uh, our supermarkets here in Manila, uh, you can see in the palm is priced palm oil at uh, 100 uh, pesos per liter. Soya or canola or even corn will be two to three times higher in price. So for, uh, for the main consumers, it will just be attractive for them to consume palm. Uh, this is just to show that how the oil palm share of the oil market has increased from 20 years ago uh, from just 13% to 28% in terms of production and in terms of export it has dominated from a 36% share of the oil export market in 1990 to 57 or even 60% by now. So, this is also uh, an indication that the world is turning more and more towards uh, farm as the source of uh, uh, complementing their shortages in, in, the world, in their own countries. And this is exactly the same there. Uh, the ones in green are the net exporting countries. Uh, Malaysia is prominently up there. Uh, with a big net excess, 15, 17 million tons net excess of palm oil and other oils from the country every year. And on the left side of this chart, headed by China, are countries having to net import. And China, for example, net importing a shoulder, uh, uh, 10 million, almost 10 million tons of oils and fats a year, including the oils and fats imported. Uh, sorry, uh, if they import beans, then they would already produce the oil internally. That would uh, already be taken, be taken care of. So, Philippines obviously is here a net exporter because you could export a lot of coconut oil. But uh, among the net exporters, there are not too many major net exporters to meet the world net import requirements. So that shows how important palm oil is in playing its role to meet the world net uh, demand because uh, these big parts here are mainly uh, palm oil net exports. Uh, just to highlight this deal, uh, actually palm oil produces two types of oil. The palm oil itself from the fruit, uh, mesoca or fresh of the fruits, and also the palm kernel oil from the sea. So basically, this crop produces two types of oil extracted separately, and you can see how the yield compares with the yield of other uh, oil seeds. And so in terms of uh, looking at a broad picture of how the world will continue to be served or supplied by edible oils, red seed, soya, and farm in bread, you can already see that uh, there is not much, uh, let's say, rigor in terms of export availability coming from the other oils, but farm is continuing to do the job of supplying the world needs. Uh, so, when it comes to sustainability, all this will take into account because the definition of sustainability already mentioned by the Honorable Minister has to take care of the triple, triple P's, people, planet, and profit. So, uh, we are often uh, bombarded with a lot of sustainability complaints or messages, uh, mainly from Western NGOs who are only focusing on the environmental sustainability. But uh, for sustainability or viability to produce, uh, continuously to meet that kind of demand that I've shown, uh, we have to look at a broader picture. So, uh, when we were actually forced to look at 
certifying for sustainability through the RSPO, we found it quite uh, easily achieved. And you can see here that uh, Malaysia is leading in, the, in its ability to supply sustainably certified farm oil according to the uh, platform or framework uh, introduced through the RSPO. So, I think there is no problem if the world were to demand more and more. Only problem is the world is not demanding the amount of sustainably certified palm oil that we are able to produce. There is no, uh, not enough uptake and not enough premium given for all the efforts put in. So, I quickly uh, want to pass this. Uh, to go on to the next stage as the world focus a lot more on sustainability from the uh, environmental point of view, we are upgrading our capacity to produce and uh, our palm oil through introducing a lot of good practices by introducing all these codes at every stage of our production, especially this is the work of MPOB. Uh, is in charge of uh, monitoring, enforcing, licensing, and registering the oil palm industry players. Now, if you, if I can refer to MPOB, responsible for all this uh, good work that they are doing, this is the only industry that is 100% licensed and registered by an authority called the MPOB. Uh, so there is no real uh, opportunity to deviate from regulations because the MPOB is also the main enforcing body to ensure that the players who are licensed and, and registered to them would be uh, having a high degree of compliance in all the practices undertaken to produce palm oil sustainably and viably. So that will lead you to looking at what we actually do. Uh, in terms of uh, CPO production, we have uh, reached almost 19 million tons. Uh, Biodiesel production uh, is still minimal, uh, especially we have already a B5, like in the Philippines, we also have a local mandate, but limited to the central region for now. So our share of use of palm oil for biodiesel production is still very small. Uh, but then we look at land, and that's where Malaysia may have a limitation because our country is rather small. We don't have too much of uh, agriculture land left for exploitation. We do have a lot of forests, but the ratio of land to production has increased from 2.79 in the 80s to uh, almost 4. Times uh, four to one land uh, uh, production to land use ratio. So we are from this chart improving our efficiency in the use of land and producing more oil out of the same piece of land. And that is in line with earlier suggestion that we should improve our efficiency. Uh, this is the biomass opportunity that I mentioned because as we produce. Farm, Somewhere here, there will be other uh, opportunities uh, in terms of biomass potential. Uh, I don't want to bore you with that, but uh, at least for some of the local players here who will one day venture more into oil palm cultivation, obviously there will be a lot more uh, potentially economic, potential economic products that could be exported from the oil palm tree. So, uh, If we were to kind of uh, postulate how much more uh, palm oil that we need to produce as we go into the future, assuming that uh, Malaysia share would uh, be to produce uh, 0.7 million tons more by 2025 or 1.4 million tons more according to the uh, simplest, simple trend line. Then we would, uh, need, we would need a lot more uh, land uh, from the oil farm itself uh, to meet the growing population. But if you were to produce the same amount of oil from, uh, let's say, this is the oil amount, this is the land that Malaysia should use to produce this amount of oil. But if you were to produce it from red seed or sunflower or soybean, there will be a lot more land needed 
to be converted to multi dose of seeds. So it means that uh, we may continue to uh, depend on farm because of the land shortage uh, problem that has already been mentioned. And also show here that in many countries, developed countries, the forest area left intact is very small in percentage terms, 11% for the UK, 19% for Australia, 33% for the US, and the current uh, NGOs or green NGOs, one thing to conserve forests, they all come from here because they don't have forests in their own country. And so they want countries like Malaysia, even Philippines, maybe Cambodia, Thailand, to preserve their forests for future generations. So, from that standpoint, I, I think our government has committed to, for me, at least 50% of Malaysia will remain under permanent forest. And that would probably allow us to claim a lot more sustainability in terms of our policy of farm work. But when we get into a real debate, like recently in Australia, who wanted to kind of label our farm work as being uh, related to deforestation, we showed them, look, Australia, a developed country, 25, 23 million people, lower population than Malaysia, uh, is actually deforesting a lot more than Malaysia, you know, five times more. So we say, please, uh, we have a level playing field, even if you wish to make allegations or enforce legislation at national level, uh, before you really penalize farm oil uh, just to, to take the cue of guidance from the NGOs who are often not very concise in their uh, allegations in terms of supporting evidence. So, uh, this is our conservation policy. We have uh, many ways of uh, ensuring conservation of our diversity, our environment, and our commitment, as I said, to preserve forests is uh, very well documented. Uh, we have the Wildlife Conservation Fund that is uh, spearheaded by the own farm oil industry to make sure that our orangutan population remains stable. Uh, we have about between 13,000 to 16,000 of them in Malaysia, including other wild species like this. Uh, wild buffaloes in Sabah, elephant, picking elephant. Uh, all these uh, conservation efforts are not only spearheaded by, I mean, ourselves as a proxy for the effort of the palm oil industry, but also by the plantation industry themselves, such as uh, looking after the uh, riparian areas around the river line, the riverways, and so on. So, uh, there are many, of course, uh, potential conflicts, but these are well managed and uh, we have probably to continue this to indicate to the world that uh, we, we are even more concerned about our environment and biodiversity conservation. In fact, we have training uh, programs conducted by NGO here Wild Asia for our plantation managers to be fully aware about uh, conservation efforts, biodiversity, and how the oil palm industry should look after the environment as well. So these are the issues of concern to the oil palm industry relating to reforestation. But we think that uh, we are putting a very high commitment to put 50% minimum of our country under forest. It should be like the UN, just put 33%. I'm sure a lot more land could be uh, released for uh, agriculture use because if the demand is there, sustainability would only mean that we use uh, appropriate land area for agriculture, which will give you 30 times more income compared to keeping the land as forest. So think about that, uh, especially for the policy makers in the world, uh, why do you want to lock your uh, value in, in a forest when the oil pump itself, if you are concerned about uh, biodiversity, you are concerned about greenhouse gas here, I'll show you this chart. This is coming towards the end of 
my presentation. It shows that when we submitted this data to the UNSCC uh, level meeting recently, climate change meeting, nationally we submitted data along this uh, way. Let me explain. Uh, in a country, there is the removal of CO2 or carbon removal, carbon sequestration, and carbon emission on the other side. So for the year 2000, Malaysia as a country uh, absorbed or removed carbon to the tune of 249, almost 250 million tons. And mostly through the forest that we have and also through the palm oil plantations that we have. And these two sectors are known under the UN FCC Convention as Lulu CF, land use and land use chain and forestry. So the same when Lulu CF is absorbing this much of carbon dioxide equivalent from the Malaysian atmosphere. The same Lulu CF sector is emitting through the land use chain, deforestation or whatever, about 36 million tons of emission, as you can see. And then there are other emissions from factories and so on. There are emissions from the transport and energy sector, which is of course dependent on fossil fuel burning. So, for the whole of the year 2000, in that year, Malaysia is a net carbon absorber, net carbon remover, net carbon sink. And this is a very powerful indicator, indicator that as a country, we don't emit carbon dioxide to the, the world. By the way, U.S. now emits 7 billion tons of CO2 a year you know, to the world atmosphere. But in this year, we were a net sink, net absorber. And just to compare, currently we are in difficulty with the EPA of the USA who wants to label palm oil as a carbon emitter and a biofuel. But actually on a macro national statistic, whatever emission by the sector plus agriculture together, Lulu CF language change sector, is so small compared to even the absorbing capacity of the oil palm trees. As you can see, 82 versus 36. And as we go into the year 2000, you can see that as we have more oil palm, the absorbing removal capacity of CO2 by the oil palm plantations, they do act like forests because they are trees and perennial crops. And, and in the forest, they are still remaining to have the same removal capacity of CO2. But the reduced amount of deforestation, the Lulu CF emission amount is even much reduced by about 100 times. And therefore, again, the palm is a net sequester of carbon rather than a net emitter. And we want to kind of uh, debate this out with the EPA to see how come nationally we are shown to be a net sequester of carbon and you are saying to us that you are a net emitter. We are a net emitter. So, yes, like the rest of the world, we also burn a lot more fossil fuel for our energy sector. But that has nothing to do with our deforestation or palm oil production, which to me remains uh, very sustainable. This is a good indicator of our sustainability uh, going forward. Especially by the year 2022, the terminal year for the EBA's uh, evaluation, the emission from the Lulu's air venue sector will be even be smaller. So in conclusion, palm oil is a major source of oil and gas as required to meet work, uh, security, food security demand, or palm cultivation shown uh, is shown to require less land. When arable land is limited, it makes sense to choose palm oil cultivation. And that's where I think the whole uh, supporters of the industry here are they are here today to see opportunities even in the Philippines where oil palm plants can be grown to a larger uh, extent. Uh, high yielding projections, the oil palm actually has uh, not even uh, gone into exporting its high yield potential. What we can possibly produce is 12, million, uh, 12 metric tons per hectare. What we are currently producing is only four. So with a lot more R&D, biotechnology, we could probably uh, 
go higher after six or eight tons of oil per hectare per year. Uh, okay, we have no problem with deforestation or maintaining a high uh, percentage of forest for our country. Uh, we have no problems with biodiversity uh, conservation again because of the high amount of forest that we have. Uh, biodiversity conservation is not an issue. But uh, as I said, uh, we need to improve our cultivation practices, especially to uh, gain more from the same piece of land. And although certification is voluntary, uh, we encourage the industry to do it and to collaborate with uh, consumers in order to have uh, to live up to the motto. We will supply what the consumers want. If they want certified palm oil, we we'll supply certified palm oil. But we have local measures like our wildlife conservation fund, which are actively working towards uh, conservation efforts. Uh, and the industry has uh, gone into the habit of uh, looking at the environment as part of their responsibility. And we go on very strong educational program to ensure the concept of conservation and biodiversity uh, within our industry and surrounding environment uh, is preserved. And NPOC is creating more awareness, showing growers how to live in harmony, conserve and enhance biodiversity. Because uh, a lot of the current campaigns by the NGOs, uh, they are focusing mainly on environmental biodiversity sorry, sustainability, whereas uh, we have to uh, grapple with the need to be viable and sustainable, not only on the environment, but also economically and uh, physically in terms of supply volume to meet the world uh, requirements. Uh, while doing so, hopefully hoping to generate enough profit to make the whole industry uh, viable and able to progress into the very much.